Hello, Silaholics, and welcome to Silaholics Anonymous. I am Shakia, the professor. If this is your first time here, uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe depending on which platform you are watching on. If you are a supporter of this channel and of this platform already, thank you for the support and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you the difference between using an SVG file versus a, D versus a DXF file. They both are vector formats that are made up of paths and can be used as cut files and can be customized by filling them in with color. However, they are set up very differently as you can see on the screen. On the left hand side is a DXF file and on the right side is an SVG file. Vector files are, uh, well these two formats are just like any other vector file. Uh, whether it is an EPS file, an Illustrator file, a CorelDRAW file, even some PDFs, depending on which program it was designed in, will give you a vector format that you can easily go in, click on it, and be able to customize it by adding colors or cropping backgrounds and things like that to it without having to trace. They can be open in a wide variety of programs, but of course here on Silaholics Anonymous, we focus on Silhouette Studio. If you have the free basic version of Silhouette Studio, you cannot open up SVG files that will be ready to go um, if you are satisfied with those colors and things like that. All you would have to do is resize it, but it would be ready to go and ready to customize. Uh, ready to print out, ready to just cut. Um, but you do have to have Designer Edition, Designer Edition Plus, or Business Edition in order to open up SVG files in Silhouette Studio. In other programs, you can't. Um, you may be able to open up those in their you know basic system. But because you can design and do so much in Silhouette Studio, uh, you do have to have one of the upgraded features to be able, like, it's basically paying for convenience. Um, but I'm gonna show you guys how to take an SVG, um, sorry, a DXF file and make it look exactly like the SVG version. Once they're in Silhouette Studio, they really are the same and it's like a, a level playing field. It's like once you get it all set up, but when you open it and bring the file in, there is going to be a significant difference. So I'm gonna start off by just selecting everything that's here on the DXF side and filling it with color. So what you will notice with this is everything fills in with color. If you're looking at like the A, the O, the P, the Q, the R, the D, the B, things that have internal areas, you don't see those. You will see little boxes there that indicate that there is something there. DXF files come unfilled with color and ungrouped and also with all paths released. So you're not going to see those inner parts. So for each letter that you want to use, you're gonna to have to go in and make that a compound path. Um, in this case, it's very, very easy because it is just alphabet, but you have to look at the image or the file that you are using and determine what needs to be made into a compound path, what can be grouped and so forth and so on. So for this one, I'm going to go through each individual element, letter or number that has an internal part and I'm going to make that a compound path first. As you can see on this particular font, there is a highlight at the top. We're not going to include that in the selection for making it a compound path because we want to make that a secondary color from what we're gonna make the base of like each letter and number. So I'm gonna click off and I'm gonna drag and select uh, through the A and making sure I see the small box for the internal part, but not going up to the highlight. Then we're going to right click and make it a compound path. Now going forward, I am going to use the keyboard shortcut. It is control C on a PC and command C, um, I'm sorry, control E on a PC or command E on a Mac. So you would hold both those down 
in um, for the keyboard shortcut or you can see you can continue to right click and make it a compound path or you can open up the um, modify panel and make compound path is there as well i break down all of these um areas where you can basically do things redundantly it's like in a lot of different areas i break all of the available options down in my essentials to silhouette studio course that is available on academy.silaholicsanonymous.com so if i just go make see it does that so i'm going to go through um, the rest of these using the keyboard shortcuts because that's the fastest way for me to do this Also, to move quickly across my screen, there is another important keyboard shortcut, which is holding down your space bar to, grab, to turn your arrow into a hand for panning. It's also the same as grabbing the hand up here and then just moving it around. I don't have to zoom out or anything like that. I can just pan around. And But using the keyboard shortcut of holding your space bar makes that go by faster. Okay, so I have now gone through and made all of the letters that have internal parts. I have gone in and made those um, a compound path. Now they look like the actual letters. They're all still with different colors, but we can go in and fill them in. Now, if you want all of your highlights to be one single color, here is another tip to um, be able to change them all fairly quickly. I'm going to go through and drag and select, not touching the highlights, just all of my letters. So we're going to select all of these coming from the bottom so I'm nowhere near the highlight. I'm just going to go up and select all of the letters, numbers, special characters. And I'm holding down shift for these bottom ones to select multiple items. And I'm going to right click and group those together or you can use the keyboard shortcut. It looks like I lost my elements, which I also need to click on this one and group it. So it looks like I lost all of my elements, but I did not. Also, sorry, I forgot two more things, the dots of the eye. So I'm going to group those together. I'm going to drag and select all the way through, like all of these, and making sure I get all the ones over here. I'm gonna hold down shift, click on any letter, any number, because they're all grouped together. That is going to deselect them. They are now not a part of the selection. I have basically all of the little highlight pieces. Some of them are hidden behind other letters. If you come up here to the top to this icon, it is bring to front. So now they're all in the front. I'm going to go over to my color palette and I'm going to make them white. And since I have them all selected, I'm going to go ahead and turn all of their line colors off. I like to see the um, elements without line colors on them. Uh, they really, I mean, unless I'm doing something with the line colors, they really serve no purpose. So I like to turn them off and it's just going to be a printed project. All right. So now that all of my highlights, which I guess these were not, but that's okay. They were still selected, but that's fine. All of my highlights are now white. I can always go back in here and change the color of those. There we go. Now we're going to click on any letter and we're going to ungroup it. 
I unfortunately had to ungroup a few times because I did not have certain things grouped together. So I'm just going to keep ungrouping until I see a bunch of boxes. Now I go in and make these any color that I want. I am going to first go through here and just remove my line color. And I think I missed one here on the end. So let's send that to the back and change that to white. And those highlights can be made into any color now that you can see them and select them. But we're gonna click on the A. If you have Design Edition or above, you can use your Properties dropper here or click I on your keyboard. I keep talking about keyboard shortcuts. If you're new to my channel, I use them a lot. So if you would like to be able to follow along with me when I am using just keyboard shortcuts or just know what in the heck I'm talking about, head on up to where it says help, go to the user manual, and the very last page of that manual, so scroll all the way to the bottom, is the keyboard shortcut list. Print this out, highlight them as you hear me mention them, and those are the ones that you want to start with um, learning first. I don't use them all. Some I just use the icons on the, like in the system, like in the program, but there are some that are like my favorites and my go-tos. So print this out and highlight the ones that you hear me mention in the videos. So you can open up your color palette and use the dropper and select colors to basically mimic what the SVG looks like, or you can sample colors from an image that you're using. If you've created your own color charts um, and things like that, you can just sample the colors. So you would just go in, change the colors to whatever you want, and guess what? You basically now have what is an SVG. It opened up as an SVG because that's the file extension. But in Silhouette Studio, they are now the same. Like I said in the beginning, it's a level playing field. But I like, uh, like I said, I like uh, keyboard shortcuts and I like having Designer Edition. Well, I really have business, but there's this special thing called the Properties Dropper, which is right here. So I'm going to click on my next letter, hit I, and then change it. I, change it. All right, so that's how easy it is to change a DXF file into an SVG file. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. If you found value in it, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. It takes all of two seconds. Don't leave without giving the video a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know um, if it was helpful for you, how you plan to use, what you have learned. Don't forget to check and see if your subscribe button or your word subscribe is grayed out for you and not red. If it's red, you are not subscribed and you're not going to be fully notified whenever I release new content. So go ahead, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss anything that I release here on the channel. Also, don't forget to visit our websites shop.sillaholicsanonymous.com as well as academy.sillaholicsanonymous.com to see all of the products and classes we have available. Again, that is shop.sillaholicsanonymous.com for all of our Honestly Speaking products. You can also sign up for classes from here. And you can also visit our Academy site, academy.sillaholicsanonymous.com. That is just all classes and courses and extended lives and things like that. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.